Tents stretch along the road to Misrata. Living in them are migrant workers, many of them from sub-Saharan Africa. They want to leave the town that has been besieged for the last two months, caught in the fighting between rebels and pro-Gaddafi forces. They had some water and uh, also lack of food. So this is a very vulnerable group uh, we should also recognize and, and, and try to assist. Humanitarian organizations evacuated dozens of injured and migrants by sea. On the 15th of April, MSF chartered a boat for the second time. The organization transferred 64 wounded to Tunisia. Many of these patients are in a critical condition. And we have uh, on board now three patients on life support. They are on ventilators. They are currently stable. They have been suffering from gunshots in uh, the stomach region, in the chest, also in the head. So the challenge now is to get these transported in a stable condition all the way to Tunisia. We have reduced quite a lot the pressure on the hospital facilities in uh, Miserata. After several hours at sea, the boat docked in the port of Zarzis in the south of Tunisia. The wounded were then evacuated to Sfax, where they were admitted to the city's hospitals. An MSF team arrived in Misrata in late April to relieve the overwhelming strain on local health personnel. 22 MSF staff members are now providing medical and surgical care in two hospitals and a clinic in the town. What time did you get here? Seven o'clock? Hold her arm like this. Let's see if she's got a temperature. Every morning, the courtyard at Abobo Sud Hospital fills up with women and children. The medical team does what it can to give them priority, but there are always too many. In Abidjan, despite the situation returning to normal, the health system remains severely weakened by the months of conflict that followed the presidential election. Few hospitals have reopened to care for the thousands of people who stayed shut in their homes without access to health care. People can go out again, but a lot of people are sick. There's a lot of malaria in particular. The hospital is overflowing with war wounded, new arrivals, and as I say, many severe cases of malaria. The situation is equally precarious in the west of the country, where tens of thousands of people were displaced. They fear militia forces, they fear reprisals. The end of the conflict does not mean an end to violence. The displaced don't want to return home. We're just civilians, but they're killing us. Our parents have died. I saw 19 people from my village who are now dead. This is the Catholic mission in Dwekwe. It's the largest displaced persons camp in Dwekwe these past four months. More than 28,000 people are living here. They are short of space, food, water and hygiene facilities. The number of cases of malaria, respiratory infection and diarrhea is increasing. The news is on everyone's lips in Port-au-Prince. Saint-Louis Hospital is moving. The tents put up shortly after the January 2010 earthquake have served their purpose. This is a temporary structure, and some of the tents have really just about had it. To make working conditions a little more comfortable for the staff, as well as for our patients, we've moved to a more permanent structure. In early May, the 180 patients hospitalized at Saint-Louis were transferred to Drouillard Hospital, built from prefabricated modules. For the move, we evacuated the wards one by one on successive days. The entire ward, its equipment, the patients and the staff were relocated to Drouillard on the same day, so patient care activities remained uninterrupted. During the four-day move, emergencies were referred to the MSF hospital in Sartre. These pictures show the transfer of the first patients from Saint-Louis to Drouillard. Saint-Louis Hospital has since been dismantled and Driar is admitting new patients. An exciting day but also kind of a sad day for me because it, it represents the end of this whole this experiment here. Um, from what I could tell we had an opportunity to create sort of an island of um, relative 
peace and stability for a lot of patients who came through here who had no peace, no stability. Doria Hospital has 167 beds and provides the same medical services as Saint Louis. The majority of patients are victims of road traffic accidents and gunshot or knife wounds. Medical innovations, new models of care, daring public health policies, long-term financing. These are the broad outlines of the report released by the Campaign for Access to Essential Medicines, published one month before the next UN General Assembly on AIDS. The report describes the progress made and presents the concerns expressed by the healthcare teams. It also spotlights a little bit of good news. Not only do drugs save lives, they also prevent transmission of the disease. We know that HIV treatment can help to save lives of people living with HIV. We also know that it prevents illnesses uh, of people living with HIV. The new evidence, however, coming out in the last year or so is that HIV treatment can also help to reduce new infections by up to 92 percent. In 10 years, the drugs have saved the lives of 6 million people. The progress made in the fight against AIDS has been immense. But much is still to be done. 10 million people still have no drugs. Access to care for those already receiving treatment also has to be made simpler. Now what we know is that simply by bringing treatment closer to clinics where people live, and that treatment can be simplified to be delivered by the local nurse as opposed to the doctor working in hospital, then not only can you reach more people, but you're actually improving care. In Tete province in Mozambique, patients organize themselves into groups of six for mutual help and support and to avoid unnecessary travel. Each of them in turn will go and collect the drugs from the health center. Tomorrow she's the member collecting the drugs for the group. Let's give her an applause as she's the one who's going. Ten years ago, the first UN General Assembly on AIDS marked a turning point in the fight against the disease. It represented a strong undertaking on the part of the international community to reverse the trend of the epidemic. However, since 2009, it has run out of steam and funding is falling. According to Médecins Sans Frontières, HIV programs need $10 billion if they are to be able to continue. The meeting in June in New York should be the opportunity for a fresh commitment so that the achievements of the past decade are not wasted.